Hi guys! I am excited to have a guest with me today, and that is my good friend and teacher, William Kiesel of Ouroboros Press. And just as of late, he has also opened a new esoteric bookstore and gallery in Seattle called Mortlake & Company. So I will link him down below, uh, but I have him here and I thought that it would be a really fun thing to go ahead and do kind of a different unboxing for you today. So this is not a tarot unboxing, but I have a package that has come in the mail, <clears throat> as you can see. Now this has come from the Getty Museum bookstore, so I know exactly what this is, although it showed up on my porch unexpected. So earlier, uh, at the end of 2016 and through the beginning of this year, uh, there was an alchemy exhibit at the Getty, and from my understanding, um, part of why they were able to put such a, a great collection of items together is because the Getty had recently acquired much of the alchemical collection of Manly P. Hall, who um, I, I think that that's where a lot of what they had at the exhibit yeah, most of the collection came from Manley Hall's collection of the Philosophical Research Society, the alchemical books in particular. Mm -hmm. So William was able to go to this exhibit back when you were here um, teaching a few months ago. I was able to make it fortunately before it ended um, and actually take some of my students with me to go and see those works. And um, as we were checking out, there was um, a few things in the bookstore that I was looking at and I saw a sign that said that there was something special from the exhibit that may or may not become available. Um, no guarantees were made, but apparently it did become available because it's ended up on my front porch. So if you will do the honors, I think maybe just one of these two boxes. <clears throat> well, it was a wonderful exhibit. Uh, I had the fortune of being able to uh, see it uh, the, the rare book curators gave us a, a tour just before the exhibit was publicly open and definitely one of the highlights uh, of the collection although all of the items in the in the collection were fantastic it's one of the the best uh, you know exhibitions on alchemical books and manuscripts I've seen in many years uh, but one of the, the most fantastic items on display was the Ripley Scroll, which is an extremely long alchemical manuscript. And this looks like a scroll. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, wow. Speaking of the Ripley Scroll... <laughs> okay, so this was the, a vinyl display piece they had at the exhibition. And it is a reproduction of the top 20% of this English alchemical scroll that's all hand done. And the figure on the top is uh, purported to be Hermes Trismegistus. And he's holding a double pelican vessel in which the uh, the ruddy toad, you can see the drops of blood sort of exploding out of this toad, uh, is one of the central motifs. And this toad is actually featured in a poem uh, by George Ripley about the Philosopher's Stone. And uh, in, the, in the base of the vessel, you can see a seven-sealed book. Uh, and each of the seals leads to these outer rondelles that, that show different alchemical processes. Uh, there's seven alchemical processes and then a Garden of Eden scene. Uh, the Garden of Eden features in many alchemical texts. And one thing that's often overlooked in these scrolls in the bottom of this vessel is that red dot. And that red dot is the red stone, the Philosopher's Stone. Sitting Below this uh, vessel is the Athenor, which is the alchemical oven that heats all of the vessels in the alchemical process. 
And although we don't get to see the entire tree, that little tree, you can see just the little bit of a serpent tail. And that tail is connected to uh, the soul, which is another part of the process in the scroll. This is a fantastic piece, Naha. What a lucky thing to get in the mail. I'm so envious. Mm-hmm. So there are 21 versions of this manuscript throughout the world. I think the British Museum has seven of them. Uh, the Manley Hall Collection, which is now at the Getty Research Center, I believe has two of them. Yale University has a, a version of this scroll. Royal College of Physicians has a, a version of this scroll. And they were all individually hand-painted, right? So they're all just a little bit... A little yes. bit different. They're all just a little different. And there's actually three versions of the scroll. Uh, two of the versions are very, very similar. And they have all of the same scenes on them except at the bottom of the scroll, uh, which unfortunately we can't see in this particular version. Uh, there's a figure that says, Woe is me, all of my work for nothing. So some of the scrolls have the Philosopher's Stone completed, and some of them don't. Hmm. And then there's a third version of the scroll called the Rosicrucian version that has more Rosicrucian symbolism in it. Mm -hmm. And it differs quite a bit from these. And you can see pictures of that in some of Carl Jung's work. So this, this uh, image, again, it's just 20% of the scroll. They had to build a special display case to display the actual manuscript itself. And, uh, you know, anyone who went to the exhibit will know it was a fantastic display. Mm -hmm. Really a fortunate thing to be able to see. So if you were in the Los Angeles area, kudos if you went to that. Uh, Can you show us the back of it? What's sure. on the other side? I don't know. That it's just, so here... There we go. The announcement of the... This is the name of the, uh, the Art of Alchemy, which was the mm -hmm. exhibit. And uh, I'm told that uh, the Getty is working on a book that mm -hmm. is uh, focused on the subject of the exhibition, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Well, William, I'm so excited that you are here to actually be able to expound upon this a little bit more than I definitely would be able to. I did want to show uh, the viewers another version from this book on the secret art of alchemy, uh, by Stanislaus Klausowski de Rolla. And so this is what William was talking about. Another version of the scroll here that you can see. <clears throat> and then one of the books that you have actually published, um, Ouroboros Press, the Theatrum Chemicum Britannica, or Britannicum. Uh, by Elias Ashmole. The Elias Ashmole collected a lot of English alchemical poetry together in this volume in 1652. And he had seen versions of the Ripley Scroll and transcribed all of the verses on them. And this book contains all of the verses from the scrolls. So this poem on this side, The Vision of George Ripley, actually features the toad that's in the scroll itself. And then these verses over here, the, the verses belonging to an emblematical scroll, are uh, all of the verses that are on the Ripley scroll itself. Fascinating material uh, and definitely worth a read. What's in the other box? Well, I couldn't just buy one for myself. So actually, I got you one too. What? <laughs> Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, you're very, very welcome. So, this is going to look great in Mortlake and Company. Fantastic. Well, I'd be honored if you would put it up in there. So, thank you so much for uh, sharing your wisdom today with us. And uh, I'll make sure and link William's information down below. If you like this channel, please give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.